Nick, welcome to Buffing Bad Cards, where we're gonna look at some really, really bad Runeterra cards that I changed in the hope of making them actually good and exciting. And you're gonna tell me if I did a good job or not. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm nervous and excited. It's gonna be fun. Before we begin, what would you say are the cards and decks you're most known for? I guess Nightfall's a big one. I hit Rank 1 with that twice, so that was good. I hit Rank 1 with Draven Jinx twice, so I'd say Draven Jinx. And I finished Rank 1 with Thresh Gnosis. I would say Draven Jinx, Nightfall, and Thresh Gnosis are probably like, if I was known for any decks, it'd probably be those three. All right, awesome. I have some cards for you today that are for Nightfall and for Thresh Gnosis. I didn't really know about you playing that much Discord aggro, so... Maybe okay. if you ever return, I'll make sure to have some cards for that too. There you go. You might have seen this one before. Oh wait, this card has Snifall on it. I like this card. Are you gonna, you're gonna buff Shadestalker? Uh, I'm gonna change it because I feel like this is one of the Nightfall cards that doesn't see as much play in most Nightfall lists anymore from what I've seen at least. So what do you think about this? So there's Shadestalker. Take me elusive, but... Nightfall or round start, create a fleeting dust battle dust in hand. Hello. Oh, this card would be so sick. So I've I've really wanted more dust pedal dust generators, or even I might even mm -hmm. main it. I mean it's a, it's a neg one, but like it's really convenient. So no elusive, it's fine. I, I don't mind because it, like it's not really an elusive, it just kind of like has that. I would love this card personally, but I think it'd be a bit broken. Honestly, because if you do mm -hmm. the nightfall effect, it's like, okay, you already activated nightfall, like the, the fleeting dust battle doesn't matter. You definitely just sit this in the back row and round start, mm -hmm. you'd have infinite nightfall activators every single turn i would love it i think it'd be broken the deck i don't know if it would put nightfall over the edge like it'd be too good because nightfall does need the buff so maybe it's like it's fine because the relative power of like oh nightfall does need the, the improvements but i do think individually this card is a bit broken I, I think the fact that like you never would have to map out your activators for the next few turns and like you just you just never run out of steam you can be a lot more greedier with just like more nightfall effects and less activators and let her do all the hard work yeah, yeah. i agree so when i looked at nightfall i always felt like the problem is that is that you don't always have the kind of activators that you want. But what yeah. if you have an engine, much like Ballistic Bot, that actually works in these type of decks? I mean, I love her. It's it's crazy mm -hmm. with certain decks. It's just like, okay, if the deck was already like tier two or high tier two, then like this is obviously too good. But if a deck's not that great, this might be just what they need. The way I look at it also is like, there are already like really strong cards in the game. This might just fit right in. I don't know how good Nightfall would be after this, but it's either too good or just right. That's the way I see okay. it. But it's, it's definitely a strong card. For the next card, I have a complete completely new, never before seen card that I would like your opinion on. It's also for Nightfall. Uh, I thought you were going to show me like a 3-3 Draven or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. I, I would actually be all for that, but this is new, new. <laughs> Glooming Lich, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five, Fearsome. Nightfall, revive an ephemeral copy of the strongest ally follower if has Nightfall activated. Interesting. So the first thing is like, you know, Winding Light, but that is a turn seven play most of the time. The reason I think this would be broken, mm -hmm. it'll just revive a 5-3 Crescent Guardian. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be swinging on turn five with like a 5-5 five, five Fearsome and a 5-3 Overwhelm. Mm -hmm. So the downside of the Ephemeral is thinking you should chump block by spiders or whatever. Crescent Guardian obviously has a lot of attack and he has Overwhelm. I like the card a lot. I think it's I think it's very strong though. Yeah, especially with Onto Dusk. Yeah, this could become pretty scary. Yeah. But oh my god, I wasn't even thinking about that. These cards are pretty busted so far, mm -hmm. but that might be what Nightfall needs to get back in the game, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so if this effect were to exist in a game, how would you balance it? Would you take away Fearsome? Would you give it weaker stats, more expensive? What would you do to make this balanced? I think five mana is a great cost. I don't think it'd be a five five though. Okay. Because you're just swinging for so much pressure. I know five mana five five doesn't sound crazy, but some, a lot of situations, they won't be able to block and trade with it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of health. So I think that if you had a effect with this much damage output, it'd have to be easier to trade into. That way that it doesn't like swing uh, multiple times. So I'd say make it a 5-3. Yeah, I really think this is an exciting effect, but uh, for an all in Nightfall deck, this could get out of control really fast. You're getting me excited. You're, you're making me want to like play these like play these cards in client right now. Like I want to go brew like a glooming lich deck now. <laughs> Perfect. That's why. That's why. That's why we're here. All right, Sun Guardian. Oh, okay. I know this card. Okay, six mana, four four. Overwhelm. Give me plus four, plus four. Oh, this is the, the current. Yeah, one, this right? is the current one, and this is the buff one. Okay, I was about to. I was about to say. I don't remember if the current or the buff. One. This is bad. This is All terrible. Right. <laughs> Daybreak can be plus two, plus two. It got worse. If you activate Dimic six plus times, your Dimic cards have Overwhelm. Oh my god. I actually love this, personally. Because there's two reasons why I love this, this is actually so much. Mm -hmm. 
One, uh, one of the biggest issues, they don't have win cons. That's the issue. Is that, exactly. Um, I mean, Leota, Leota's overwhelmed now, but it's, you know, she's just Leona. It's only one card, and she doesn't have that much attack. You can make Morning Light, but it's just like so unreliable. So yeah, this gives her the win con. And I also love how it's six plus times, because that's not like a thing you can just splash or just do. Like you have to kind of be playing a dedicated Daybreak deck, and you have to have Ravoon out. So I feel like this gives Daybreak the, uh, the the win cons it needed, and it rewards the dedicated Daybreak decks. And kind of brings the whole package together. I actually love this change a lot. This is phenomenal, I think. So so I, when I try to analyze like what kind of cards I want to showcase, I look at, okay, what is this archetype and what is it missing? And for Daybreak, that was just easily, they don't have a finisher. Yeah, they don't have a win con, yeah. It kind of gives the, some some flavor to Daybreak as like an overwhelm thing. Like, they didn't give Leona overwhelm. It's like, if they have this card too, it's just, uh, okay, well, overwhelm maybe is kind of part of the flavor of Daybreak now. Okay, we kind of went through Nightfall and a little bit of Daybreak, but the second deck you were talking about was Nasus Trash. So I could be completely wrong on this, uh, but I tried to change Absorb Soul. <laughs> this is what it's like in the game. Okay. Okay, it's such a random card. <laughs> Ooh. Zero mana, kill an ally to summon a prey burst. Unfortunately, I don't think I would play this. It's just a neg one, really, and like, the deck doesn't have any problems getting out the Curse Keeper. You don't need a burst activator to try and swing for pressure. The reason Curse Keeper is good is because you're able to get value, like, mit mitigating the losses of killing an ally. Yeah, that's fair. So this one gives you damage, but unfortunately, the prey won't do too much. Like, it's not bad if it didn't, it's just inherently kind of a minus one. All right, Nick, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, I'll take you back to last season. I was grinding for Master and I was playing against a Nami mm -hmm. TF player. I was ahead by a lot and they played one Burblefish and that Burblefish generated one Absorb Soul and it gate kept me and I had to play like 20 extra games to get Master. So I figured <laughs> I'm just going to change this card to zero mana so I won't have that issue anymore. Yeah. There you go. There all right. You go. But that's fair. I mean, hey, I'm all for taking away healing cards. I mean, you know me, healing <laughs> cheating type thing. <laughs> okay, the next card is pretty wild. Uh, this is the original version. Oh, here we go. Petrocyte Stag, what does it even do? <laughs> Four mana, three, five, support, I take damage for my support allergy. Okay. And here is the updated version, and you're gonna have to stick with me here because uh, it might be a bit confusing, okay. but I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain. Four mana, three, five. Play Trance... Oh god, this is like completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's entirely different. Uh, I, I read Landmark and I'm just like, wait a second, this is, this is not even the same card. Mm -hmm. Transform a Landmark into a unit. Okay. It keeps its text and health equal to its cost. Granted, formidable, if it has countdown, it dies with... So I'm assuming it has zero attack, right? Yeah, I, uh, I sent uh, an image of what that would look like if you used it on a Frozen Thrall. So this is landmark removal for Demacia, basically, but they're they're doing it the Demacian way. They're turning statues to life. Oh, that's cool, actually. Okay, so yeah, the cost is the health and it has formidable. Mm -hmm. And if it has countdown, it dies when it finishes. Okay, no, I, I understand this card. This is kind of interesting. So, okay, okay so at first I was thinking, why, how would you even use this? Why would you use this? But now I'm realizing that this is a, it's it's, it's like not anti-meta, but use it on your opponent's cards primarily. I understand yeah. it now. What, what is the landmark removal in Demacia? It's the uh, the Captain Erica, the eight man or six six that puts like the uh, landmark in her pocket by capturing yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say like, every just landmark removal and I never see Demacia use any. I guess it's just, yeah, a card's very expensive. I mean, this is definitely a more affordable one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is cool because Petrostack Stack literally sees no play. I'm for the change because I think landmarks are very hard to interact with and I, I would love any anything more that could help with them. Now, my question to you, if you make them a unit, it doesn't really remove them, right? Because if they're countdown, don't they still get like the Thrall at the end of the turn? Or no? Yeah, so when it's countdown eight, it still functions the exact same way as any landmark. So the Thrall still is countdown eight and when it's done, it destroys itself and summons an 8 So is the goal of this like to transform them so that way you can kill them? Like you make it have one health and then you just like challenge it or something? Basically, yeah. But also for the other, you know, more problematic landmarks, maybe like Sun Disk or something, you know, Countdown 25 is a lot. Or also the Battle Tree. It's mostly for removing the more persistent landmarks that don't have Countdown that are just mm -hmm. the win cons. I'm a fan. I'm a huge, I, I would love this change because I just feel like uh, the landmark decks in Runeterra are some of the hardest to interact with. And that's what makes them so strong. Like they're also like insanely strong right now. Would you ever like, if you're playing a Grand Plaza deck and you're like, okay, I don't, I need an actual unit now. Would you turn your own Grand plaza into a into a unit with petrocyte <laughs> stag swing as a for a, like a zero three <laughs> i i play grand plaza decks i love them with lucian they're kind of cool gwen too now here's another new card that many people were asking for actually petrify give a follower formidable this round Ooh. 
Well, give a follower formidable. This is so versatile. Yeah, so it's like stress defense where you can use it on an enemy too. But this basically comes from a lot of comments on my YouTube videos asking for formidable bubble sometimes bear. And I was like, I'm okay, small, well, I don't really want to do that. But maybe if this card existed, then, you know. I'm just trying to think of like key units in the game you would use this on that are like meta. Yeah, the problem is kind of that it's uh, formidable followers. I mean, I could give this formidable champion too, if that would make it easier, because then you could kind of run it in like some of the the, the Braum Galio decks, for example. Oh my God, Braum would be so cool. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. But that that's like, I was trying to think like what cards have high health and I'm like, well, all the ones that have really high health are already formidable, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think you could make it do champions and it wouldn't be too broken. Cause I, I think like, you know, come on, it's, it's Braum, you know? <laughs> like there's no doubt, like it's not like Braum's gonna be OP or something. Cause it's for, it's for the round. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, if you do it for the round, that's fine. I, I actually, I actually really, really think this card is cool. I love this card. And then, yeah, it would definitely be like a Soraka Braum type thing. It's versatile and you can, it, it's versatile in deck building because you can do it in touch different decks. It's versatile in game because it gives you a lot of player agency to like, I'll use my own unit, your unit, but I, I do think it can hit champs and that'll make it a lot more uh, exciting because some of the, the first cards I'm thinking of, you know, are champs. Yeah, okay, fair. Next card. I'm sure you have some stories about this card and I would love to hear them. What is your worst Reggie story? Oh God, I thought it was me, Eye of the Dragon. Have you ever been extremely high rolled by this, by this guy? Oh yeah. I, I think my worst one ever I think I was playing versus timelines and they got buried in ice. And then I think I think they main decked it that stairs or something. So they buried I think I'm pretty sure they buried ice me and then played it that stairs. Like mine is when I was about to win. I think I was playing like Poppy Terek. I, I was about to just pop off in a turn and kill my opponent, but I was like seven HP or something. And they played Pharaoh's Financier on the turn before, but leveled Ezreal on board and they got Song Spinner and they just killed me from seven HP because of it. <laughs> That's way worse than mine. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's uh, here's Reggie, but a little bit different. Play manifests a six plus cost spell from the enemy's regions. Yeah, it's, it's Reggie, but for the enemy regions. Yeah, I, I see. This would only see play in certain decks that want more Reggies. Like, obviously, if you're just picking between the two, your Reggie's better. Mm -hmm. Or I guess, they're, well, I guess they're both. Oh, well, I guess they're both. Reggie. Um, let me try again. <laughs> if, you're, if you're picking between the two, Fer Pharaoh's Financier is better. Uh -huh. It just has a better, like, two ones just way, way better than one, two. I think Jen generally being able to control the cards you get is that you want from your own regions you could play this in the jace or like lux or heimer decks that like if you want more it wouldn't it would i don't think it would ever be like three pharaohs three reggie the racketeer because that's like too many mm -hmm. if you wanted a fourth copy of reggie it's like okay i'll play or sorry a fourth copy <laughs> A fourth copy of Ferris Financier. You can play four fin three Financier, one Reggie. It was so hard to differentiate. I was like, Reggie, I mean, uh, Financier, because I guess they're both Reggie. <laughs> okay, so uh, Starry Scam, uh, to me, always felt like it should be a good card, but it just never really got there. So here's... Yeah, that card's cool. A very big buff. It costs two less and can be played at burst if you hold slush. It's the same thing, it just goes at burst speed. Yeah. So like Rizzo Mist, you can just burst it out of your hand. I personally think that would be fine because the only deck that would really abuse... Oh, uh, wait, I'm not, okay. I was thinking about the aggro capabilities at first and I was like, that seems fine because like Draven Zoe is not that great. But now I'm realizing it's probably just really, really strong defensively because it's like, you just play the Celestial deck, you have a burst speed 2-2 blocker and point in time it costs zero. I think that would be too good. I, I feel like a burst speed blocker in Celestial deck is really convenient. Maybe Celestials need that. Mm -hmm. They're like fringe. Like they're like they're like really fringe. Yeah. Like, like they're they're on the cusp of being good, so this might be fine. But this card does seem a bit too strong. I think. Okay. Yeah. I, the deck I, that I was thinking about first two was aggro, but now that you mention it. A deck like Thresh A Soul, right, could make great use of this. I think that would be the perfect fit for that. Yeah, because I feel like in terms of aggro, there's just better aggro decks. But in terms of defensively, I think this would be like a solid two of maybe even three of just to like stop open attacks. All right, next card. Oh, no. All right, be careful. Mm -hmm. You need to be careful. I okay, I know this card sucks and everyone knows it sucks and everyone's like, why is this card so bad? But you got to be careful with Life Steal Spell of Shield. <laughs> All right. Tell me if, if this oh works. God. I'm like already scared because if the card gets playable, you know people are start like abusing it with Kaiser or something. Oh yeah, for sure. Three, three mana, one, two. Oh God, this card's so bad. <laughs> but it has to do with, what's the effect deal? Strike heal allies equal to the damage dealt. Ah, uh, that actually might be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's still a three mana, one, two, and it has to strike. I, I know I had to be careful, so I had to keep it like pretty contained. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, no, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> it's also really cute. I didn't realize how cute this card was because I don't look at it often. I kind of want it to be good. It wasn't like the, the Targon trailer even. It was like flying around and stuff. It was. I'm pretty sure it was this one. And they just printed Adorable. a terrible card for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess you got to be really careful. Um, I actually think this effect's fine. I mean, this. I think this card could never get a stat buff, like ever. I, I, I think that 
it, really any stat buff would be too good. But this is interesting because it's like it has to strike, which is obviously not good for a 1-2. But it makes it more playable than it was currently. I don't even know if this would make it fit in any deck. The way I see it is that if any buff can buff something and not make it broken, then like, why not do it? You're making a card that's unplayable slightly more playable, but it's still fine. You yeah, know? no, exactly. So like, mm -hmm. my mentality of this change is why not? Like, why not give it that effect? Because it wouldn't really change much, but it'd make it a little bit better for people who are fledgling Stellicorn fans. <laughs> I don't know if there's many of them out there, but that's pretty yeah. much exactly <laughs> my mindset going into making these cards. It's like, okay, I need to be careful that I, I make it exciting, you know, that there's something to talk about, but I also need to not make it too broken because it's done as this, like, uh, yeah, this card uh, would break the game. So let's yeah. move on to the next card, you know? That's, you gotta be careful. The one, the one fledgling Stellicorn fan is screaming right now. <laughs> <laughs> please, Riot, please. <laughs> <laughs> exactly one of them, yeah. This next card has been requested a lot for this specific change. Okay. I I know that you've seen it before. I know you have. <laughs> I know you have, Nick. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm familiar. <laughs> familiar. Oh, you took away the gold border. Oh, okay. I'm going to cut that out because wow. I, that, that's me messing up with the custom card creator. <laughs> Before I even read what the new one does, I'm just gonna assume what it does because I get asked about this constantly. Yeah. I, I, I'm not joking, I have not read the one you showed me. I, I'm looking at the original right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna guess it says, if you've attacked with five plus eight or fearsome allies. I'm just gonna assume <laughs> that's what it says. Well, Nick. Am I right? Yeah, yeah you're pretty good wow. at this. <laughs> and literally, you've attacked with six plus eight or fearsome allies. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm against this, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. this is just a huge nerf to Nightfall. Okay, I mean. Like, this is like, 10 times harder to level. Okay, uh, okay, I I, for <laughs> I also forgot to add Fearsome, but let's assume that Nocturne yeah, has I was Fearsome. Going to, I was going to ask, I was going to ask you <laughs> if you thought it would be too good if it had Fearsome, which I, I don't think it no, is. No, 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 so. that's just terrible production quality. Okay, <laughs> and let's assume that if you attack with Nocturne, you get two procs, and if you attack with the Stygian Onlooker when it's active, you also get two procs because they are Nightfall and Fearsome. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Now I, it's all coming together. I didn't mention this earlier. I'm a huge Fearsome enthusiast. This gives you more win cons. Like it gives you more of a bomb. Like Clissa's great as a unit, but like her level doesn't happen that often because you're not like, you're not like killing your own units that often. It just kind of like happens occasionally. Nocturne leveling is like an actual like threat, like an actual like, okay, if I level Nocturne, like I will win. Cause then you can start spamming your units and just get her every time. In Fearsomes, this would be amazing. I, I do think attacking with eight plus Fearsomes would also be a bit hard though. Like you'd have to do like harrowing stuff or attack multiple times. I don't know, it, it, it'd be hard if they have removal. I'm, I'm afraid of like, if you play against any removal based deck, which is like a lot of decks, especially things like Stygian Onlooker, like say you play Stygian Onlooker and they like even have to have like a Vile Feast or something. Mm -hmm. They're setting you back so far in progress to the point where like, I think that A plus is too much. I wish there was a way you could differentiate where it's like, you have to do Nightfall or you have to do Fearsome, but they don't, they don't. Oh, okay. You have to pick, but I don't know how you would do that, you know? Do you remember when Nocturne got buffed that you don't need to play a unit to give the minus one on level up, but you can just summon yeah. them? I feel like the fact uh -huh. they did that makes it less likely that they will ever make this change because with harrowing and stuff, it would actually just become really, really frustrating to play against. I think. Uh, I love, I love adding this card because did you notice there's one more, there's one more thing you messed up on this card? Oh no! Do you see what, it? No, what is it? Wait, re read its level up condition. You've attacked with A plus Nightfall or fearsome allies. Oh, off. <laughs> <laughs> a plus Nightfall of fearsome allies. <laughs> There's three uh, mistakes um, in yeah. this card. Oh, no. yeah. It's it's interesting because like I again as a nightfall player, I get asked this all the time. I think there's something here mm -hmm. that players want with the fearsome change. But now that you're like actually like you know picking your brain on how to do it, it's a lot more complicated than it seems. It's not as simple as a lot of people probably think. As as I thought even it's like oh just make it or fearsome. It's too good I guess because the nightfalls and fearsomes overlap. Yeah. You know I don't think there's a way to differentiate. There might just not be a solution. But if you had to do or if i had to do one i guess and i had to do it i'd probably make it like six or seven and hope it's not too broken i think eight's a bit too much because it's very preventable okay um that that would be my change and i'd probably also give it a gold border and change the night the <laughs> or and uh yeah I, i'd also give him piercing <laughs> all right <laughs> I'm, I'm making notes right now up the production value this is unacceptable okay okay we hold ourselves to a higher standard <laughs> Yeah, especially with, with, with a guest like you, I need to I need to do well. I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> your <laughs> no, no, what are your favorite Nightfall? Cha is it your favorite I, champion actually? Yeah. Is it one of? People don't know this, but my favorite champion is actually Darius. Oh, but it's like when I first got in the game, my favorite deck was the Agro Spiders, mm -hmm. and there was nothing, and I mean nothing more satisfying than Darius coming around saying, "All in, or this for Noxus, or all in this, or whatever." Yeah. whatever he said. My axe is ready. 
swing for 10 overwhelm so i think that i have a special place in my heart for like how satisfying that's what got me hooked in the game it's just like bam darius game so i love darius as much as i don't play him he's probably my favorite okay in that case i i didn't uh prepare this but i'm gonna show you darius even though i didn't have it in the selection for you but just because you said that i'm gonna show you a darius card okay oh okay okay so so you had a darius in the pocket yeah pretty much i had it in my back pocket and okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show it to you oh he's so cool oh my god and i want to play darius again now i like you forget he's even the game like when okay be honest with you. you play a lot right yeah. and you play a lot of different decks mm -hmm. when is the last time you've played even with or against Darius? yeah it's been so long and i gotta be honest if if it wasn't for like the overwhelm deck that he saw like a few play i think i've seen him like once or twice in like the entire year of playing yeah like i i think that he might actually be like one of the least played champ is there a champ that you see less than him i can't even think of one because like now we see yasuo like a good bit yeah too. even katarina right yeah cat's good when i'm summoned give other allies plus two plus zero okay this card is absurdly broken i see the enemy nexus has half of a star all right i'll level with you this card's a bit broken <laughs> <laughs> other allies have plus three plus zero Bro oh, but they nerfed his level, his level form, right? Mm. So you used to have 10 attack, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think his original form is way too good. It's only for this turn, though. You only give everything plus two attack this turn that he summoned. So the reason it's so good, at one point, Overwhelm was good, and it ran three decisive maneuver. Mm -hmm. uh, very strong card to buff your whole board. Now, we, some cool things you can do with that card is you run House Spider. It goes wide, so you get a big buff of this maneuver. I think that this would also do something similar, where it's like, if you literally just have House Spiders, like they would just be pushing for infinite damage. Ah, uh, now nah, I'm, I'm gonna play some Darius. Today. I'm like really, really <laughs> wanting to play Darius. I think that the, the level one form is a bit too good mm -hmm. just because you can abuse it with House Spider and because, of course, just with Overwhelms, it's like really strong. So, the second form I can maybe get behind. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it did nerf, like, obviously his attack. I feel like it can't be plus three plus zero. I think it would have to be plus two plus zero the second form. And I do actually like that change a lot because like, he's supposed to be a bomb. It makes it so your damage more diversified, which is obviously better. I think they want him to be a bomb. Do, do you think uh, this would also be, like, a really big buff to spiders, for example? Because they run one champion, but Ooh. this with, with spiders seems pretty nasty. I think that the, way, the cards you show me here are a bit too strong. Mm -hmm. But if you nerf them down to reasonable power level, I would absolutely love because i think it's it's very splashable in a few different like it's versatile you can get yeah, spider aggro is a good thing i wasn't even thinking about that that, that I, would, I would actually play that yeah they did buff yeah. darius recently but i don't think that counts for buff. us yeah us pvp players <laughs> <laughs> i was the, my face i was so excited when it was like darius buff i was like finally and it was like <laughs> Pat the champions. I was like, oh I can't god. believe they put that in the patch preview. They showed that his was icon. That the biggest bait. Oh my god. That was the biggest bait ever. I can't believe it. But yeah, I, I, I do. I, I'm a big fan. I, I, I think this is on the lines of being uh, something I would absolutely. I mean, I mean, love it. If this changed uh, I, again, it was a little bit weaker. I would, I would, I would be playing eight hours a day, like foaming at the mouth, like like waiting to get off or whatever I'm doing to go play Darius. <laughs> it would get me hooked for sure. I'd be very excited. Right. Look, you, you see the vision. We gave you the template. See our vision. <laughs> oh, stalking wolf. So I'm a boomer. I got people call them, I guess, like LOR boomers. Mm, same. There's just cards that like used, I used to see back in the day that I, I wish were good. I made it kind of overwhelm support. I made it a Darius card for you. Support. Summon a snow hair blocking my supported ally. Oh. So you swing and then it forces a 1 1 block. Assen essentially doing direct overwhelm damage minus one because those are, are they're one ones right are they one zero ones right? because freyord noxus overwhelm is like like this would be like it's in the right regions like if this was not in freyord it would be like well how do you make it overwhelm but this is like one of the goats regions from uh, i'm playing overwhelm after this oh my god <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm going to put stalking with my deck and be like, wait, wait, this is not what I signed up for. And everyone's like, why are you playing stalking? <laughs> I like it. The, the current iteration is quite literally unplayable. I would not be shocked if it's if it like literally one of the least part, play cards in the entire game. Yeah, same. There could be a world that's just too good. I don't know. It's weird because me, the words too good and stalking wolf don't really go in the same <laughs> sentence. Uh -huh. So my brain won't let me like say that, but I could definitely see how this would be really strong and could randomly just chip for like infinite and people would be like, what is this? You're probably owing to get one attacking with the stalking wolf because it is a 3-2 and it loses the challenger but you know in the region with freezes and troll chant there is a world that you could maybe get multiple yeah. and then it becomes really really strong it has downsides too so i think that might balance it out to the point where it's like well we don't really want them to have a free blocker so you have to have certain things like let's say they stun your darius or something or like vengeance hit then it's like okay well then i have a dead stalking wolf which is fine because it balances you know how strong it is for you you do resolve the effect Exactly. That was actually all the cards. So before we oh, end, okay. uh, I, I, I kind of want to keep going because I was having a lot of fun, but I have no cards left, sadly. 
But do you have a favorite? Okay, I didn't when, when we decided to do this together. I didn't know you were catering to me specifically, and like, like not, obviously not all of them are catered to me, but like some of them, you're like, oh, Nightfall cards and stuff. Like I wasn't ready. I do my research. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you did. You did cards that got me excited. But I think the something with the dairy change is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I mean, champions are like people love champions. Runeterra, it's one of the biggest selling points, and I don't know if I'd be playing today if I didn't get hooked on Darius when I first started playing, and I would love to play him again. So Darius is probably my favorite. Just get that good old Noxus overall satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to read the YouTube comments when people read Petrashite Stag because like that that was flavorful like that was that was juicy like.